Greetings YouTube, Simon here and welcome to Final Fantasy VIII. Once again, the remaster is out in just three days time now and maybe that will be your first time playing Final Fantasy VIII or perhaps it's just something you haven't played for a while. Uh, in any case, I hope this video is going to be a help to you. I'm going to be showing you today how you can absolutely overpower your party members using some very early farming techniques that will see you fit for pretty much the rest of the game. Now be warned, if you follow the advice that I give you in this video, you really will be overpowered. So you may want to think twice before doing so, but if it makes you feel any better, everything I'm sharing with you today is just using the standard in-game mechanics. It's not using the additional feats, uh, side cheats or features that are coming with the remaster. Anyway, as always guys, a huge thank you to those that support me on Patreon and or as a YouTube member. And if you guys enjoy the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get started with today's episode. Now, most of the farming we're going to be doing to overpower our characters is going to be involving playing the triple triad card game as opposed to killing enemies. That's important because it keeps our party members' levels low and anybody that knows anything about Final Fantasy VIII will tell you that the best way to play the game is to try and keep your party members as low as possible. I won't get into the reasons for that today, mainly because it's kind of going off topic a little bit. So, once you begin the game, you begin your new adventure, one of the first things you're going to do is have a classroom lesson from Quistis. Once that's finished, head back to your computer terminal to get the Shiva and Quetzalcoatl guardian forces. And then when you leave the classroom, you'll come over to this corridor here by the elevator. Make sure before you ride that lift, you actually speak to this NPC. And the reason for that is he's going to start you off on your carding adventure by giving you some triple triad cards for free right from the get-go. So speak to him, that's all you need to do, and he will give those to you. You don't need to play him at this point. If you want to play somebody, make sure you use the uh, talk button, not the confirm button. So the confirm button is what you'd normally use to interact with people. The talk button will tell you whether they play cards or not. Uh, anyway, just talk to him normally, and he will give you those cards. Uh, and then you're just going to progress through the game as normal. Now, I strongly recommend playing up to the section with the fire cavern where you'll recruit Ifrit as your third guardian force. You can actually do some of these techniques I'm going to be showing you before this bit. But the reason why I don't recommend that, even though some other guides tell you that you can do so, is because if you uh, do some of the grinding I'm going to show you without Ifrit, he's not going to be learning abilities as a guardian force in your arsenal. So it's better to be learning abilities on all three guardian forces at one time by doing the grinding all together. I hope that makes sense. Just a little bonus tip, by the way. When you're fighting Ifrit you'll want to get the time as low as possible because that will actually give you a higher score later on which will boost your initial seed rank so what I recommend is that once you actually kill this guy whatever time is left on the clock just bear that in mind that when you get to the naming screen where you name your guardian force actually just wait that amount of time you can't set the timer at that point but just wait until you're sure the timer has expired and be just because of the way the mechanics on the timer actually work if you let it expire at the naming screen then you'll get the maximum possible score you can for the fire cavern test Okay, so with the fire cavern completed and three guardian forces in our arsenal, we're going to make our first detour on the way to overpoweredness. Okay, so what we're going to do is head first of all into Ballam Town, and if we make our way over to the train station, we'll find an NPC just outside, known as the Queen of Cards. Now, whatever you do, don't try and play cards with her, because she has some very strong cards in her arsenal. She will blitz you at this stage in the game. What we are going to be doing is using her to set the trade rule of all here in the Balam region. Now trade rules determine what cards you can win or indeed what cards your opponents will win from you should they win or should you win. So the current rule is probably going to be set to either one or difference. One being that if you win a card game you will be able to select one card from your opponent to add to your own repertoire. Difference being that you can collect however many cards you won the game by. Now what we want to set it to is all, that's A-double-L, -L, so that every card game we win we will collect all of the opponent's cards. Now the way we do this is we offer to battle the queen we see what rules she has and then we quit we don't actually play her so we just repeat this process until the trade rule changes to all when it does change to all however long that takes we then quit again we definitely don't play her but once we've quit after it says all it's very important you don't speak to her again or that could change the trade rule back away from all once more so there it is it's on all 
we're going to quit. Now, this doesn't mean that every person we play is going to have the trade rule of all, but what it does mean is that they can have the trade rule of all. It becomes available in the region. So we just go through this whole speak to them, quit again, until they do have the all rule available. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense. Just make sure you follow what I'm doing here and get her to say all as her trade rule. Then we're going to actually move on to the farming. Now, if you haven't already, you may want to draw some basic magics from the various enemies scattered around the place in order to junction them to your stats. Just make sure that you escape from those battles if you do that so that you don't level up your party members. The actual farming for your Guardian Force abilities is going to take place on the beach where you can fight these fish creatures. And the reason you want to fight these guys is that each battle with two fish gives your guardian forces a whopping 6 AP each, which is really good at this stage in the game. Uh, but also you can get fish fins, which can be refined into the powerful water magic. Now, i will put on the screen the abilities you want to learn with the guardian forces. You don't need to learn all of the abilities right now. But what I would prioritise is the strength uh, plus 20% for Squall. And the reason for that is you can assign some water magic or something to him and that will just help you get through these early battles a lot quicker while you're farming for the other abilities. And just make sure you learn the refinement abilities, the thunder, ice, fire refinement abilities, but also most importantly are the card and card mod abilities. They're the things we're really going to need for this farming. So once you at least have those four abilities, then you're going to want to head back to Balam Garden and we're going to begin by actually, you know, playing people and trying to win their cards. Now, one big tip I'm going to give you going forward, this is really important, save often, okay? If you lose card games, if you lose your cards, it's a lot easier having to just reload your save game and trying again than having to try and, you know, win all your cards back that you've just lost. So make sure you're saving regularly before card battling. Now, one of the good things about this farming method is that it's usually the common cards that we can win around this place that are going to be able to be refined into powerful items and magics. However, there's also a couple of rare cards we can get around here that we won't be refining, but we will be using those to win more consistently in the card games. So the first rare card that we might be able to win, fortunately quite close to the save point, so if we lose our cards here, we can just reload is with this boy that sometimes spawns in this area and you'll see him because he runs uh, across from one area to the other so if he's not there just keep resetting the area until he appears and eventually he will show up uh, there he is look so make sure you use the correct button to battle him and he can have the mini mod card but before that we might have to reset the trade rule so we know now that all is available in this region because we set that at the queen of cards earlier so we're just going to quit out of this and just keep repeating that same process that we did earlier until the all rule is set now once the all rule is set it should stay set for a while here in the garden so battle him make sure you use your ifrit card another bonus for uh, playing the fire cavern section first it's the only powerful card you're going to have right now and try and get his mini mod card which he doesn't always play and another rare card you can get is if you head into the cafeteria then you can speak to these two fellas that are sitting down over on the right hand side and you'll get an option when you do so to speak to the one in the front or the one in the back make sure you speak to the one in the back and he seems to have a thing for Quistis uh, which also means he has her card but fortunately he does play it, though it, again it can be quite rare for him to do so so you might have to battle him a few times now fortunately even if he doesn't play Quistis's card he tends to play some strong cards anyway so if you can beat him then you'll probably get a nice collection of cards especially with that all rule uh, to build up your collection very very quickly but again I do strongly recommend especially if you've got the mini mod card to make sure you save after doing that before battling this guy so that if you do lose you can just reload. Uh, once you start to beat him a few times though, as I say, you will get a nice collection of strong cards to be playing with the other people around here. And you just want to make sure that you go around battling pretty much all of the people, collecting as many cards as you can. The more cards you collect, the more magics you're going to be able to refine. But as I say, I do strongly recommend getting that mini mod card and getting the uh, Quistis card to go with your Ifrit card. If you play three of those along with two common cards in each game, you're just probably never going to lose to tell you the truth. I've just edited forward a little bit and what you're going to see now is the result of about two hours of card battling um, and as you can see I managed to collect just a whole ton of common cards here along uh, with those three rare cards that I mentioned as well. So at this point they are Ifrit, Quistis and Minimog and as you can see they are very powerful compared to the common cards which just makes card battling a breeze at this stage in the game. 
But with all of these rare cards, sorry, these common cards, it's time to start refining them into powerful items. And the first thing we're going to start refining for are blue magics for Quistis. So these are items that we can get from card mod, which we can then teach to Quistis in order to give her new abilities for her limit, blue magic. And I'm just going to pop up on the screen a little graphic. You might want to pause to see this to show some of the blue magics I was able to get from this couple of hours of farming. Now, some of these were uh, either very easy to get or took a little bit of time to get but were worth getting. So, for example, Degenerator, which requires a black hole, is a really powerful item that allows you to, or a powerful ability that allows you to actually eject enemies from battle immediately without having to fight them. And some of those other abilities, Bad Breath, probably needs no introduction. Uh, Fire Breath is extremely powerful, though the 10 Ruby Dragons you need to uh, refine that is actually a little bit of a nuisance to farm, but you can get 10 Ruby Dragon cards around Balam here. And then Aqua Breath is a nice one as well. Uh, Mighty Guard, I never actually got that myself because I didn't get the 10 Behemoth cards. But you can do that if you want to farm for 10 Behemoth cards. They can be uh, refined into a barrier which can then be given to Quistis to teach that Mighty Guard. A nice defensive ability which can come in useful for your party. But hopefully now you've learned these blue magics. So what we're going to do is move on now to the really fun stuff, which is some of the powerful magics that we can get from card modding and refining in order to junction those to our stats for just huge amounts of character power. So in order to actually get magics, we need to use the card mod ability to mod the cards into the various items, such as those uh, worms there, abyssal worms into windmills. And then we need to use either the thunder, ice or fire magic refinement abilities in order to refine those items into the actual magics themselves. So by using thunder magic refinement, we can refine those windmills into the really powerful tornado magic. Junction that to strength or to some other stats, and that is going to be a huge, huge boost to the the party member that has it so you might want to go ahead and farm three sets of 100 so that you can have one for each party member though right now you can only do two uh, but later on you can come back and get your third party member to have a hundred of those magics as well not just for tornado but for everything so once again guys going to put a graphic up on the screen for you you can pause the video check out all of the various magics you can get as of right now at least out of the game's powerful offerings, there's a whole load of other weak magics you can get, but uh, I'm not going to focus on those here. This is about overpowerment. Now, once you've got a load of powerful magics, you can start junctioning them to your stats, of course. This will boost them quite substantially so that you're doing a lot of damage, especially, like I say, early on in the adventure. Now, one thing to note as well is that when you have a high strength stat on Squall, if you want to keep him in critical health, you can actually use your Limit Break Rentacucum to pretty much one-shot anything early on, even bosses, which I'll show you now. Uh, as a side note, by the way, when you find yourself fighting the early boss known as Alvarette, make sure you don't forget to draw Siren, uh, your fourth guardian force. And as you can see, now that I've done that, we're going to unleash Renzakuken on this boss. And each of Squall's attacks does close to a thousand points of damage with that tornado junction to strength. And, you know, if I'm not even using a limit break, if I just hit an enemy with a normal attack with the gun blade, that will still do a thousand points of damage. And this boss having taken no damage before that limit break, uh, pretty much was made short work of there, as you can see. And incidentally, another bonus that you'll have by doing this early farming method is that when you fight the spider boss, if you can keep Squall in that critical status, you actually have a fairly simple way of defeating the spider boss, an enemy which the game normally does not expect you to defeat, you just escape from the battle. But if you do defeat it, not only do you get 50 AP, which is a huge amount, and can actually be farmed, by the way, you can farm this guy on the bridge if you're fighting there for 50 AP a battle by killing him each time. Uh, but you can also get items to drop from him which teach your Guardian Forces powerful abilities. So yeah, by all means guys, you know, use this farming method to actually kill the boss that you're not supposed to kill for some even extra, you know, even, you know, more bonuses and what have you. It's just an awesome thing you can do, folks. So hopefully the video has helped you. And if it has, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll certainly be putting out more tips for the Final Fantasy VIII Remaster as the game enters our hands in just a couple of days time now. But hopefully this will see you good on your way. And let me know what you think. If there's anything I've missed, please do share in the comments section below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Video. Goodbye, everybody. Well, thank you so much for stopping by checking out the video today. Now, perhaps you might consider becoming a YouTube channel member. Doing so not only supports me as a creator, but it also bestows upon you certain cool bonuses, such as the ability to have your name stand out in YouTube comments and live stream chats, 
as well as having yourself credited in every future upload that I do. If that sounds interesting, check out the join button, which you can find just below if watching on PC.